A function rule is the operation performed in the domain value to get the range value. Okay? For functions, we're given a domain, or also known as our input, to get our range value, also known as our output. So our x, our domain, is our input, our y, our range, is always our output. Okay? We might be given a function like double a number, then add three. They might give it to you in a verbal phrase, and you have to translate it uh, into an expression, into a function rule. Double a number, 2x, then add 3, it would be plus 3. Any questions? All right, write this down. A navigation message from a satellite to a GPS and airplane is sent once every 12 minutes. A, write an equation to find the number of messages sent in any number of minutes. So, you're supposed to write an equation to find the number of measures in any number of minutes, okay? If I send it at, after 12 minutes, how many messages have been sent? Oh. Wait, what? After 12 minutes, how many messages have been sent, Evan? One. After 24, messages, 24 minutes, how yeah. many messages? Two. 36. Three. Three. Everybody see a pattern? Okay, all we're doing is we're taking the number of minutes, dividing it by 12, that would give us our output, our y. Okay, our y is the number of messages. X is the number of minutes. So if I say in 30 minutes, how many messages have been sent? You can divide it by 12 and find x. All right. So now we're supposed to make a function table to find the number of messages in 120 minutes, 180 minutes, 240 minutes, and 300 minutes. So let's make a function table with x and y. Alright, so this is our input. These are our x coordinates. 120, 180, 240, and 300. We need to find our output, our y, our range. So what we do is we use their function rule that we just came up with. That's x divided by 12 is equal to y. So what's 120 divided by 12? 10. What's 180 divided by 12? 20. It is 15. 240 divided by 12? 20. 20. 300 divided by 12 is 25. Good. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to graph it. So get out your graph paper from your notes, and let's graph it. Now, can we fit those ordered pairs onto this graph? Yes, we can. Right now, as it is? No. We have to do what? That one word. It's It's an S word. Stable. Nah, scale. Oh, scale. Scale. Okay, we have to scale. We have to scale the the graph. So what we're gonna do? Okay, look at your x coordinates. Where do they range from? Like one hundred and twenty to three hundred, right? So, what would be a good number to scale by? By twos. Tens. Tens. 10, we'd only get to 100, so no. Let's go by, let's go by 60s. 60s. Okay, 1 is 60. What is 2? 120. What's 3? 180. What is 4? 240. What is 5? 300. Does our x coordinates fit on here? Yes. Well, now they do. What about our y coordinates? Do they fit on here? Uh, yeah. No. Yeah. No. no. What's our smallest y coordinate? 25. 10. 10. What's our largest? 25. 25. So, what do you want to go with? If we go by 2, does it fit? No. We could go by fives. 
Uh, let's go by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. All right, so let's graph our coordinates. Our first one was 120 over... 120 and what? 120 over 10. 10, 120 and 10. So 120 on X, 10 on our Y is going to fit right about there. Just over 3. Okay, what's our next one? 180 over 15. 180 over 15. All right, what's next? 240 over 20. So in between 6 and 7. And then what? 25, so just over 8. Okay, and there's our graph. Easy enough. All right, so write this down. The speed of sound is about 1088 feet per second. A, write an equation to find a distance traveled by sound for any number of seconds. So, how many, how many feet would sound travel after one second? Uh, a good uh, one, 1088. 10, 10, 1088, right? How far would it travel after two seconds? It would double that, right? Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to write an equation to find a distance traveled by sound. So this is what you need to write, okay? 1088 times x. So this equals y, okay? Our number of seconds is x. Our distance traveled is y. All right, so for b, it says make a function table to find a distance sound travels in 0, 1, 2, and 3 seconds. Then we're going to graph. So... Make a function table, x and y, 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, and remember our function rule, 1088x equals y. So after 0 seconds, how far did sound travel? 0. 0. After 1 second, how far did it travel? 1. 1088. 2, okay, it's 2176. All right, now before we finish this, okay, one thing I want to talk about is some of the homework say state the domain range. Okay, what would be my domain here? The x coordinates. Domain is x coordinates. So if I was writing a function table, I would just write domain above x. What would I write above Y? Range. Range. Okay. Does everybody understand how to do that? Yeah. All right. So three, three seconds, it's 3,264. All right. So now what we got to do is we got to graph it. So I need to scale my, do I need to scale my X? No, they fit on there right now, don't they? One, two, three. Okay. But the Y I need to scale. What do I need to scale it to? Hundreds. Hundreds, but would 3,000 fit on there? No, we need to go to the top. You probably need to go by 1,000. Because 100 times 10 is 1,000, right? That's even smaller. It would still wouldn't get on there. Okay. Let's go 500. Okay. If we go by hundreds, it wouldn't fit. A thousands. It would be really small. We want to kind of stretch it out. So one is 500. Two is a thousand. Three is 1500. Four is 2000. Five is 2500. And six is 3000. Seven is 3500. Okay. That would stretch it out a little bit better than if you went by thousands. Okay, it would fit better. So at zero, how far did sound travel? Zero. How far did it travel after one second? Okay. 
1088. So we're going to go just above 2 on the Y. Just barely over it. Okay, because each, each line is 500, so it's got fit in between there. How far after 2 seconds? Okay, so just over 4 on the Y. How about 3? Okay, so about in between 6 and 7. Here we go. That's how you represent it on a graph. Barely even got that down. Here's your homework.